NASA and Blue Origin are going to Mars this summer. The American Space Agency and the Bezos-owned private company have confirmed that two satellites destined for Martian orbit will be on board the new Glenn rocket when it lifts off for the second time this year. The payload is known as Escapade, short for Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers. It's a pair of identical small satellites that are each about the size of a washing machine. They were built by another commercial space company, Rocket Lab, and the instruments on board are designed by the University of California Berkeley's Space Sciences Lab. The goal of Escapade is to study the interaction between the solar wind and the magnetic field of Mars, essentially how the planet responds to space weather. They'll do this by taking simultaneous observations from different locations around Martian orbit. New Glenn is Blue Origin's first orbital rocket. It's a heavy lift vehicle, one of the most powerful rocket boosters currently in service around the world. New Glenn was actually supposed to fly the Escapade mission late last year on the rocket's first ever launch. That's fairly unusual because typically you don't want to put anything important inside a totally new rocket design, but Escapade was in need of a cheap ride to Mars and Blue Origin was eager for a technical demonstration of what their rocket could do. It didn't work out though. Rocket Lab shipped the satellites from California to Florida and prepped them for launch, but delays with getting the New Glenn onto the launch pad resulted in a missed opportunity to hit Mars. New Glenn ended up launching in January this year with Blue Origin's own test payload on board, and it was deployed into orbit successfully. The rocket booster made an attempt at a water landing on a drone ship, but it exploded somewhere along the way. Not unusual for a first try. And now, for the second time, Rocket Lab is preparing their spacecraft for a trip to Florida. The plan is for New Glenn to lift off sometime in August or September. Now you might be wondering, how can they delay a Mars mission by one year when the transfer window only opens once every two years? Fair question. What we typically aim for when flying from Earth to Mars is the Hohmann transfer window, which is the most efficient journey between the two planets. It's the time when we are closest in our orbit around the Sun, but that's not the only way to go to Mars. What's unique about this launch is that in comparison to the size of the payload, New Glenn is massively overpowered for this mission. Each Escapade satellite weighs about 120 kilos or 250 pounds. New Glenn doesn't have an official capacity rating for Mars injection, but it can put 7,000 pounds into orbit around the moon, and it's not much more energy required to reach Martian orbit, so we're nowhere near pushing this rocket to its limit. University of California scientists have been experimenting with what they call some complex trajectories for getting their payload to Mars outside of the usual transfer window. Last year, the mission director described a kidney bean-shaped dance that would send the spacecraft out to the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, which is where the James Webb telescope is currently parked. Then, Escapade would fly back around the Earth to slingshot off of our gravity and then head deeper into the solar system. That should get the probes to Mars in September 2027. The extended trip will allow the twin probes to conduct more science along the way. They can still measure the solar wind at various locations around the Earth where we don't actually study that often, so we might actually learn something about our own planet as well. U of C says that the extended trip will mean more radiation exposure to the spacecraft, but they don't expect that to pose a problem. The data that they eventually return once they arrive at their destination might help us to understand what happened to the atmosphere of Mars. The planet used to be very similar to our own, with warm temperatures and flowing water, but then the Martian atmosphere disappeared and the planet dried up. But this isn't the only launch for Blue Origin's New Glenn this year that promises to go beyond the Earth. The company also has plans to land on the moon in 2025. They're currently preparing the first build of their Blue Moon Lander Mark 1, with a goal to fly in October or November. This would be a Pathfinder mission for their Blue Moon Mark 2, which is supposed to land people on the moon for NASA's Artemis 5 mission. Mark 1 is a smaller cargo variant, but it would still be the largest spacecraft to reach the surface if successful. It's just a little bigger than the old Apollo lunar module. Now, how realistic is that? Well, New Glenn has demonstrated that it can get a payload into Earth orbit, which is great. Getting from there to lunar orbit is not so difficult. That's been done many times, but landing on the moon is a real challenge no matter who you are, unless you're China apparently, but most other missions have tried to land on the moon and failed. 
So if blue also fails, that doesn't necessarily mean that they suck, it just makes them par for the course, which does still kind of suck, but space is pretty hard. Anyway, if you want to talk about ambition, check this out. South Korea recently said that they have plans to build a moon base of their own. South Korea is definitely a lesser known player in the space race, but they are far from the back of the pack. The Koreans actually established a space administration of their own in 2024, CASA, which is designed to coordinate space research, policy, and industry partnerships. CASA also has their own orbital rocket, Nuri. It was entirely designed and manufactured in South Korea and launched for the first time in 2021. That makes South Korea the seventh nation so far to have their own ability to put a satellite with a mass of at least one ton into Earth orbit. Nuri can carry up to three tons. It's a good rocket, but still not quite enough to reach the moon. In 2022, South Korea launched their first probe to lunar orbit. It took off on a SpaceX Falcon 9 and is still operating to this day. The next big milestone is scheduled for 2032. CASA wants to put its first robotic lander on the surface of the moon, and then by 2040, they will have developed an even more capable lunar lander with the goal of building an economic base on the moon by 2045. At the same time, they also have plans to land on Mars in 2045 as well. Ambitious? Yeah, sure, but that's the whole point of space exploration. Elon Musk thinks he can send you to live in a city on Mars in the same time frame, so Korea looks pretty sensible by that metric. Building a moon base is also the trendy thing right now. There's obviously the whole NASA Artemis thing. China and Russia have a big plan for a nuclear-powered robotic research station. A couple years ago, India put out a notice that they were going to begin construction on a moon base in 2047. So. If everybody's right, then it's about to get crowded up there. But again, space is pretty hard. Speaking of which, the SpaceX Starship is having a bit of a time right now. After a spontaneous combustion last month, during a routine test that reduced the Starship orbiter to twisted metal, the company is on the verge of getting back on track. Now, their engine test stand for the vehicle is still a charred wreck, but the crew at Starbase has found a temporary solution. Basically, all they need to do is set up a mount where the Starship can be fueled up and the engines can be static fired. That way, they can verify that their next ship is at least a little less explosive than the last. Not that every other Starship this year hasn't also exploded, but they at least made it to space first, so we need to at least get back to that standard. Anyway, Starbase obviously has a launch pad where a rocket can be fired up, but that mount is built specifically for the Super Heavy Booster. You can't just drop a Starship orbiter on top, but apparently you can make an adapter. And that's exactly what SpaceX has done. Crews have just completed a new ring structure that can go in between the ship and the launch mount to make everything fit together. That means Starship testing is back on, and if successful, that gets us pretty much back to where we were a month ago. Elon Musk is optimistic though, as always, he posted on July 14th that Starship will launch again in about three weeks, which is about two weeks from right now. Now, if we factor in Elon time, that means we might see a launch in four weeks. So best to stay tuned. On that note, if you are still watching the video right now, yeah, you, we're breaking the fourth wall here. If you like the video, then you might consider becoming a channel member here on YouTube. And we're rolling out a new member perk to sweeten the deal. Channel members now get early exclusive access to our custom built 3D renderings. You also get to see what we all look like in real life and future benefits that are still undetermined, but will probably be pretty cool. Either way, if you like the channel and you want to support us, this is a really great way to help us continue to make bigger, better videos for you. So be sure to check the link down below in the description and join today.